Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Hi, thank you for spending this time with me here today. As parents who have lost a child, we all know people who have said things that are just inappropriate or just plain hurtful. In this episode, you're going to hear from myself and two other moms who have become very special friends to me as we talk about some of the specific things people say in their attempt to make us feel better. But before we get started, let me introduce both of them. Sarah Faith Nelson has been on this journey for 10 years. She taught elementary and middle school grades for 15 years. Now she enjoys pursuing her love of writing. The primary focus of Sarah's writing has always leaned toward themes of hope, faith, and trust in the goodness of God. Since the death of her daughter and only child, Jeanette, she writes about her grief journey and surviving a devastating loss. She continues to write about trusting in God's goodness and grace while grappling with the hard questions. Sarah and her husband, Dennis, live in Arizona. BJ has been on this journey for almost 30 years and is the mom of baby Jody and the adult son, Jay, who left this world too soon. BJ and her husband, Dr. Doug Jensen, are best known for directing the Love in Motion Signing Choir for 30 years. They founded the nonprofit called Healing Hallelujah Ministries to offer hope, help, and healing to hurting hearts. Doug and BJ's creative efforts include writing books and stories, songs and sketches, and are highly sought speakers at events and conferences for bereaved parents. All of their ministries have come to fruition since the loss of their two children. And here is my conversation with BJ and Sarah. So I am here with BJ and Sarah. We're actually doing this live. It's not a Zoom call because they are here with me for our Weekend of Hope. So welcome, BJ, and welcome, Sarah. Thank Thank you. you. All right. Now, the topic today, someone posted on our GPS Hope private page something that I thought would be really good to talk about with a couple of my Periver friends who, like I said, are now here with me in Wisconsin. They are both seasoned on this journey for a while. So what the topic is, is one myth or something stupid, (laughs) we'll just call it like it is, that you wish people wouldn't say or that they would understand about beyond grieving, but grieving the death of our child. Because that is, like all of you know, it's it's a different grief. It's a whole different journey. If you lost a parent or a sibling, you know, losing a child is a totally different journey. So we're just going to run through these, and the three of us are going to talk about it. So the first one that was listed on the Facebook page is grief is not a contagious disease. So please don't avoid us like we have the plague. So I think we're all familiar with feeling like people are just avoiding us. What about you two? Yeah, I think uh, what I've experienced is people are afraid. It raises fear Mm -hmm. in people. If it happened to me, it could happen to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they avoided me because they didn't want to think about that. Right, right. And in that sense, it does, it's almost like, like a disease, you know, Mm -hmm. if you get it, I could get it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, stay away because I don't want to, yeah, a fear, a fear. Any thoughts, BJ? I know that we experienced some people that didn't want to be with a choir that was going to conferences, grief conferences, Uh, because they were afraid hmm. of people that that had happened to. It's it's almost like leprosy to Mm -hmm. some people, Mm -hmm. which is like, Mm -hmm. no, um, it's not. It's part of life. And until you experience it, you don't know what it, it's like to go through. Yeah. But it's not contagious. It's We need people yes. to surround us mm-hmm. rather than yes. to go away from us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, we need people in our lives who remind us just by them living their lives and being mm-hmm. with us mm-hmm. that life does go on. Yes. I mean, because our lives have come to a screeching halt. And it's almost like, how can everybody else be just going on like life is normal? But on the other hand, we can get to the point where that can actually be 
a comforting thing at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I, using the word normal isn't, <laughs> but we can learn a new to live normal. again. It's and, a new yeah, normal. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. learn to live. There is still life to live. Let's put it that yes. way. There's still life to live mm -hmm. and, and to figure out how to do that. So here is another one. The first year is the worst. Hmm. Not my experience. How Until the guys? second year comes. Until <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. you get sideswiped by the second year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of those things where different people have different experiences. I felt like the first year was pretty rough mm -hmm. because the the trauma was just so fresh and raw. Mm -hmm. I felt like it got a little bit, I felt like that rawness eased a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then you've been through the first year, you've been through all the firsts, and you expect it to be better the second right. year. Yep. But that's what's that's what doesn't kind of make sense is because then you have to do, well, this is the second. You expect mm -hmm. it to be like the first, and it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was how it was for me. The second year, I, you know, I, I was prepared. It's going to be better because I've already been through, mm -hmm. you know, this holiday and this holiday mm -hmm. and her birthday. And I felt like I was sideswiped that the second year was worse than the first. And I don't want to scare people. Okay, because it's not like that for, for everyone. You know, if you're in your first mm -hmm. year, you know, it's like, how could it possibly be worse? Don't tell me that. But I, I think can't in the first this. year, Laura, we have this grace yes. covering this, this shield, this God-given fog, <laughs> this the, you're right. numbness, we, yeah. It's kind of like a numbness, and people surround us, and people are there for us, family and friends, mm -hmm. but then they start going away, and mm -hmm. something changes that second year. The fog lifts a little bit, and you really feel the pain, Yeah, and there's nobody there to help. Right, because, yeah, because it's, I don't know, there's something about this one-year marker, that people mm -hmm. think after a year, you know, everybody should be doing better. It doesn't matter what your loss is. There's something about that one year that... I've met people that the fifth year was the hardest because they expected... When, you know, when we go in with expectations, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. we're always kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. And some year, the, the five-year mark was worse for them. Mm -hmm. It's different for everybody. Yeah. It's, it's, some people don't face the pain mm -hmm. and walk through it right away. Mm -hmm. So they have to face it later. Yes. We met someone at yes. the 10-year mark that had never gone to a conference, mm -hmm. never gone to a mm -hmm. meeting, never dealt with their pain, right. just kind of swept it under mm -hmm. the rug right. and tried to go on and became a workaholic and just never focused on the grief, and then all of a sudden, wham, Yeah, that 10th year, it hit them. Mm -hmm. Maybe when another person Something triggered died or it just, it triggered yeah, that, they couldn't that grief. Deal with, yeah. So we always advise to feel what you're feeling and go through it now yes. to save you later down the road. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think for those of us who have experienced that first year was horrible, yeah. and then it's like, uh, how can, how is it even possible for that second year to be worse? You know, like we said, well, it's kind of like the fog is lifted and the reality of they're not here. They really aren't here kind of starts to set in. And then for, for a lot, not all, that third year starts becoming a little more manageable. You know, you start figuring things out. You start getting your footing, your bearings. Um, the tsunamis come less and less. Yes, yeah. And they're not as bad. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like the second year could be worse, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the second year is piled on top of the first year. To me, it's kind of like it's worse in a different way than the first year. So. I, I didn't, my second year wasn't worse. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just a continuation. It didn't get worse. Mm -hmm. I think it slowly got better, but it was very slowly. Yeah, because you you had quite a journey, from what I remember, from you know all the years of you and I being together and hearing each other. I mean, you were like in bed crying. I was I in mean, bed for, crying you for were, months. Yeah, months. I mean, totally incapacitated I was. by your grief yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So anything is better than that. <laughs> like, right. It did right. get better after that. Right. You know, and it's funny because we met someone now. at a conference in Ohio, 
And she had been, you know, several, I think it was five or 10 years in, eight, maybe it was eight years into it. She talked to Dave and she said, I'm just as bad as I was that first, mm-hmm. when it first happened. And you know, we didn't say it to her, but as Dave and I were discussing it, it's like, I'm pretty sure it, you're, it's not just as bad or you wouldn't be here right now at this mm-hmm. conference. <laughs> you would still be curled up in a ball in your bed, you know, kind of a thing or mm-hmm. crying in your chair or unable to even walk out the door yet. So something has gotten better, but she just, for some reason, couldn't seem to see that or acknowledge she that. She still felt the pain. She felt the pain. So she was able to at least function within the pain. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. So here's another one. You're so strong. I couldn't do that. I I just, I couldn't live if my child died. We are like in survival mode, right? (laughs) Just really. (laughs) It's like, like we had a choice. You know, I I couldn't do that if my child died. I just, it's like, you're just so strong. It's like, uh, yeah. I think of that old Twyla Paris song, The Warrior is a Child. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Ah, yeah. Yeah, we, we weren't given a choice. And so you just have to do what you have to do to continue living. Mm -hmm. Um, You have two options. You continue living or you don't. Mm -hmm. Now, the don't wasn't an option. Yeah. It's just off the table, Mm -hmm. not an option. So you figure out how to go on, you know, day by day, even hour by hour. You just figure it out. Minute by minute, breath by breath sometimes. I remember sitting, I remember exactly the chair looking and I... I realized I wasn't breathing and I had to make myself take a breath. Mm -hmm. I I just, you know, just, I was just in this state and I just realized (laughs) I just hadn't taken a breath for a while. And I know for most of us will say, you know, I'm not suicidal. I just don't want to be here anymore. It's like, God, just take me in my sleep or something. Mm-hmm. You know, when COVID came, it's like, bring it on. I don't care if I get COVID and go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is that sense of why do I have to still be here? But that is not the same as suicidal ideology. Mm-hmm. Those are two separate things. So mm-hmm. uh, when I say that option is not on the table, it's not that I didn't wish that I could go home and be right. with her, but I wasn't going to try and do something. Right, to make that happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't there, BJ, isn't there a term for that? I know there's a term for, like, you just don't eat, you don't you don't take care of yourself. It's a, it's a, oh, I know there's a term for it. It's some sort of a suicidal term. And it's not like an intentional ending your life, but you're just not taking mm-hmm. your care of yourself to the point where your body does start to shut down mm-hmm. and... Um, I know what you're so, talking about, but I don't know the term. Can't think of the term. I know yeah. there's a, there is a term for it though. Mm-hmm. So you know, and there is that lack of caring about. I don't care if I eat well. Mm-hmm. I'll just eat whatever I want because it's easier, and mm-hmm. I just don't care about my right. health. Right. And at a certain point, that kind of it catches you, up to you. You gotta fix that at some point, but mm-hmm. at first, you don't care. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with strong. It has to do with survival. Yes. yes. It's uh-huh. like That's the I'm, word. I'm just surviving, not, mm-hmm. not being strong mm-hmm. or not being courageous. And I think a lot of times we're on autopilot. Mm-hmm. Right. I, we're just on, you're seeing me on autopilot. You know, I'm mm-hmm. here, but I'm not here. Right. I may be here physically totally here. looking like I'm functioning, but... You know, I just, mm-hmm. my brain's not here. I'm, <laughs> my emotions are not here. I'm just, this is autopilot. This is, mm-hmm. like you said, surviving. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the, our, our strength comes from the Lord. We have no strength whatsoever. Whatsoever. Yeah. That's a good testimony. Mm-hmm. I'm not strong, but mm-hmm. through Christ I mm-hmm. can yeah. get through this. And this is strong. one of those times where the, the whole footsteps poem, it's like, yeah, yeah, he's definitely carrying me. I, I like to say sometimes Carrie, you know, I'm in a wheelchair. He's you know, like crutches. No, it's wheelchair or he's carrying me. <laughs> okay. How about now, Sarah, you will have never heard this one because you lost Jeanette, your only child, your only daughter, but at least you still have other children, you know, thinking that our other kids can fill that void. So BJ, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I say, which one of your children would you like to give back? Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not comforting. Yeah. You know, each child, each individual is, you love for themselves. Mm -hmm. And and if they're gone, 
That's a big void. That void, that was the that, word that came to my head. That yep. nothing else can fill. Right, right. I mean, that child was already part of your life. And even, you know, even... Part of your body. Yeah. Part of your DNA. Part, part of your very being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think of, you know, the, the moms or the parents who have had a pregnancy loss. And then you have that, what's called a rainbow baby. Mm -hmm. But it still does not right. replace... Mm -hmm. The not. child you lost. One just, person it, does not replace another, another person. person. Mm -hmm. Different personalities, yeah. different, everything is different. Just yeah. everything. I mean, even if you have twins, because we know people who have lost a twin, lost one of the twins. And it doesn't, sometimes it makes it harder because you're so used to seeing them together and now there's only one. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I think that is a good thought. You know, which, which one of your children would you like to give back? And be okay because the other kids will take that place, take their place, fill that void. I think people say things not thinking. Yeah. They just they want to do something to soothe us or yes. to to make it all better or to help us feel better, and they just don't realize. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to educate people right. and say that was hurtful to me, or mm -hmm. you know, I, my child could never be replaced by another child. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and hopefully not that. in the rawness of the no. anger that rises up in us when yeah. we hear something like that. Not but just to, okay, gently. Yeah. You know, okay, what you just said, <laughs> you know, think about it if it were reversed. Which child would you be okay losing from this earth because you have other children to take their place? You know, it just, it doesn't work that way. It, it's, you know, I will always, always miss this child that's not here. How about... Talking to me about my child, you don't want to do that because you don't want to make me feel worse. People don't talk to us about our child because they think it's going to make us cry. They think it's going to make us feel bad. They, they're doing fine now. I don't want to bring it up. <laughs> First of all, we're not doing fine. <laughs> I think what hurts me is that they don't talk exactly. about our children. Yeah. I love to hear the name of my child. Yeah. Yes. Say yes. the name of my child. Tell me the stories or... Tell me how he affected you, or mm -hmm. tell me. Mm -hmm. I love that. I may cry, but I'm going to cry anyway. Exactly. It doesn't matter. It makes me feel good to hear that other people cared or knew mm -hmm. him. Or, or remember him. Remember him yes. or loved him or had a relationship with him. That, I love mm -hmm. to hear that, but people don't realize. It's a gift. It's, it's not something to stay away from. It's one of the best gifts you can give a bereaved yeah, parent, yeah. is to talk about their child and remember their child mm -hmm. with them. Yes. Share a memory, share a picture. Sarah, we yeah, that, I, I love that idea of that's a gift because I, I need to know that my daughter is not forgotten. Mm -hmm. And I love it when other people share their experiences with her, their memories of her. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it makes her feel alive to me again. Mm -hmm to hear how they reacted with her and interacted with her. And, mm -hmm. um, I like that. But yes, I have encountered that where people are afraid. And, and this is an odd thing too for me. Sometimes I'm afraid to bring it up to some of her friends. Okay. So it works that way for me too. Mm. I don't want to hurt their feelings by talking about Jeanette in front of them. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, and that's interesting too because she was with some of these friends when she had a sudden mm -hmm. massive yeah. heart attack. Yes. And so, I mean, they were they were the ones that were there. When yeah, and I don't want to bring, up that, bring trauma. up that trauma to them. Right. But sometimes I would like to talk about it mm -hmm. uh, with them, but I'm afraid. Isn't so, that the same type of it's, thinking? It's, it's the same Isn't thing. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I know, like, wow. especially, like, with parents and then the siblings, it's, it's almost like, well, I don't, you know, I know my kids are hurting because they lost their brother or sister. And so I don't want to make them hurt worse. And the kids are thinking, you know, mom's already a mess. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I can't talk to her about Becca because she's such a mess. You know, I don't want to make it worse. And so even within the family, within the four walls of your home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can be doing that to each other, mm -hmm. assuming that, you know, I don't want to make it worse for anybody else by talking about it. And then mm -hmm. it just becomes worse. It just becomes walls that get mm -hmm. put up. And, mm -hmm. and the longer that goes, it's like the more separated you become. 
was it yesterday we were talking, or maybe it was just earlier, a few minutes ago. <laughs> Grief fog. Um, just, <laughs> just talking, <laughs> just talking about how we each handle it differently. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like we have, Becca was the oldest of five, so we have four other kids. Well, some of them may need to process it more alone. Where one of the other kids, I know Austin, he would come, I'll start crying. He would come home from school and he just couldn't go back. I mean, he would walk, he was within walking distance and he just couldn't stay at school. And he would come back and we would just find ourselves sitting on the kitchen floor, just crying and talking about Becca. You know, he needed that. He needed to be able to talk about his loss and process the loss with his sister. Jameson was freshly married, literally freshly married. He had a new wife. You know, his mind was totally on somewhere else. He had been away to college, and so he didn't have quite that same close connection, you know, that season of life with his sister. I mean, they were close. Our family was close. But he was in such a different season that, you know, he would talk to his wife a little bit, but it wasn't this need that he had to help him process it. So, you know, all of that to say, talking about our children, I think some of that, yeah, we're all different in that. So how how do we deal with that? Well, Jeff never wanted to talk about... And this was your, your son, your The oldest son, son mm-hmm. yeah. Never wanted to acknowledge or talk about the death. Mm-hmm. And that means for years and years and years. Mm. And finally... It hurt me so bad, the elephant in the room, Yeah. Mm-hmm. that finally I just started saying, oh, I love it. I love uh, when Jay does that. Or oh, this was Jay's uh-huh. favorite movie. Or we're going to have Jay's favorite meal tonight. Or mm-hmm. just mm, once in a while, not yeah. all the time, just to mention it mm-hmm. casually like that. Mm-hmm. And finally he started saying, oh, yeah, that was... That's J to a T, or that's uh, the exact uh, way he said that. Or, but it took a long time mm. of just gently throwing in mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. little tidbit. Yeah. So I think, you know, some of that, could it be just outright asking, you know, or mm-hmm. communicating in, you know, I, I kind of need to talk about Becca right now. Are you open for that? Or, you know, someone does come to us because we know there are times where I can't think about right, Becca right now. I will fall apart and I mm-hmm. can't fall apart right now. This is mm-hmm. not the time or the place. I won't be able to quit crying. I won't, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe sometimes it's like, hey, I, I, you know, a friend coming up and saying, hey, I just had a memory about Becca. Can I share it with you? And it might be later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to hear it, but later. Mm-hmm. You know, something like that. Or even with our kids or our spouse because we do... We grieve differently with our spouses. We mm-hmm. grieve. I, that's what we like to say. You hear there's no wrong way to grieve. Unless it's your spouse. Then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because because you're not, not like doing me. it like me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're doing it wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there, there really is no wrong way. It's just, wow. I, I don't know if there really is an answer to this one. Except the fact that don't make the assumption. Mm-hmm. I guess the, the big thing is... Don't make the assumption. Assuming well, that we, you're going to hurt me by bringing up my yeah, child. Yeah, bereaved parents, we need to say what we need. Yes. <laughs> and yes. so often we don't. It's mm-hmm. uh, my husband Doug would say, "Well, what can I do for you mm-hmm. when you're when you get that mm-hmm. sad or whatever?" Mm-hmm. I need you to put your arm around me. That helps mm-hmm. me more than anything. Mm-hmm. Or I need you to just sit here quietly with me. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, we need to tell what our needs are. Sometimes yes. we don't know what they I, that's are. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes but, we don't even know what we need. Mm-hmm. But we need to be communicative mm-hmm. of what our needs are. Yeah. Yeah. How about this too shall pass from Scripture, you know. <laughs> In time, you'll get over it. You'll, you'll get over it. This too shall pass is Scripture? Well, this <laughs> shall come to pass, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> This too shall pass. It sounds King Jameth to me. <laughs> Do we get over it? Oh, you never get over love. Oh, that's a good mm-hmm. way of putting it. Mm-hmm. You're going to love the, your whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think about in our country when the whole gold rush and families would head west, 
there was no communication. If there was, it was by a horse with a piece of mail that could take months or years. I mean, think about people who came over on the Mayflower in those ships no talking back to, I mean, you would say goodbye to like your daughter who was leaving with her husband, never knowing if you would ever hear from them or see them again, never knowing if you would have grandchildren again. They were allowed to miss their child or their families who mm -hmm. went way overseas or missionaries that are way in the boonies and we don't get to hear from them. So why are we not allowed to miss our children? Why are we expected to get over it just because they're in heaven instead of here? Because we're not educated. It, we're back to that again, aren't we? Back to that again. It's up to us to educate. What you're doing, Laura, mm -hmm. is so important. It's so valuable because you're educating people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a big one. I know we could talk about this one for a long time. We'll try not to. Comparing losses. When someone says, oh, I, I'm so sorry. I know how you feel because I lost and just fill in the blank. It could be I lost my grandma and she practically raised me. I lost, you know, my mom or I, I fill in the my blank. My little fluffy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. When my dog died, it was like losing my kid. Mm -hmm. I know how you feel. <laughs> I, I, I said to one person one time, you're actually comparing your cat to my child. Yeah. I yeah. said, Somehow that does not compute to me. Yeah, to me that's insulting. Mm -hmm. and, and I can understand the other comparisons, like someone whose parent died and they understand grief. Because I was that way too. I had mm -hmm. lost my parents and my mom was a pretty hard loss. And I thought I understood grief mm -hmm. until my daughter died. And, you did and then I realized, that. boy, I don't know anything about grief because this is very different than that. Mm -hmm. But you did understand grief. You understood it to the point right. of your it, loss. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with that's anyone. everybody. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's really what they're trying to say is, I have felt a deep loss as well. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to, they're trying to empathize. They're tr they really are trying to feel our pain with us. Mm -hmm. And so they compare it to the greatest loss they've ever experienced. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the greatest depth of loss that they've ever had. I'm sorry if the greatest loss you've ever had is your dog or your cat. You've got a lot coming your way. <laughs> you know, you're going to learn. You know, and, and I, who, was, who was it we were talking to the other day? And, and they said it was along the line of, you know, when someone said something like, you know, comparing the pet loss or whatever. And it was like, oh, it was a horse. Someone had lost their horse. Mm -hmm. And it was like... Yeah, are you really saying that when, if your daughter were to die, you would feel the same pain <laughs> that you did when you lost your horse? It would be the same level mm -hmm. of grief? And it was like, oh, I didn't think about that. Thank God that they don't know. Yes, You yes. know, Doug and oh, I, yes. my husband and mm -hmm. I, we say EGR. We try really hard to give extra grace, mm. extra grace required EGR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just look at each other and smile. <laughs> and are thankful that they don't know. Yes. yes. I, yes. And I've said that to a few people. And I haven't said it very much, but I have said that to some people. I'm glad you don't know what this feels like because mm -hmm. you cannot know unless no. it happens to you. Right. And I don't want that to happen mm -hmm. to anyone else. I, it was tears again. It was really hard to know that my mom became one of us. When my sister died recently, right, right. you know, it's just, and mom, I'm sorry. I know you're listening and this is bringing you to tears, but yeah, you don't want anybody to know. And when it's your own family member, I know your sister lost mm -hmm. a daughter yes. before you, yes. you know, and I'm sure it just broke her heart mm -hmm. to think my sister now knows what yes. this is like. Mm -hmm. You don't want anybody to know what this is like because it's so dark mm -hmm. and it's so hard. It's so painful. Mm -hmm. I, one thing that I find amazing, even among us perivers, is that we don't even tell each other, I know how you feel, I lost my daughter too. It's kind of like, I know the pain of losing a child. You know, it's kind of like, I know what I went through, mm -hmm. but there's something it's in us that knows, I still don't know what you went through, right. AJ. I don't know what it's like to have my son jump off a bridge and end his life. I don't know, mm -hmm. because I, you had a different relationship with Jay than I did with Becca. I don't know what it's like to lose your only child Sarah, you know, I, I just, we, we know the depth of the darkness and the pain, but I still don't know 
how you felt mm -hmm. when you lost your child. Yeah. I know how I felt. And we all know it's a very dark place. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, comparing losses, it doesn't do any good, even among ourselves, which right. we tend not to do. Although I have discovered sometimes we do when it's like, I was telling BJ the other day, if you have to start it with at least, then don't say it. <laughs> you know, at least you got to have your daughter for 29 years. I only got to have mine for seven. Mm -hmm. You know, at least, you know, you didn't have your child grow up to be your best friend. Now I lost my daughter and my best friend. You know, you lost, well, at least you got to know, at least you got to have grandchildren. At least you got to, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we do think those thoughts, right. but it doesn't do anybody any good. You know, so I just say if, if your thought or your words start with at least you, then don't, don't even bother saying it. Because the comparisons, you know, the whole comparing losses is painful and hurtful. Mm -hmm. It just to ourselves and to the person we're comparing. Mm -hmm. And and it's easy to say that without even really thinking about yeah. it. It comes out of our mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we realize, oh, yeah. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But once again, we're trying to help someone feel better. We, want, yes. we don't know what to do to help them feel better. We want mm -hmm. to fix it. We're fixers. That's exactly yes. right. We want to fix them. Yes. There's no fixing this. Yeah. It's like, unless you can bring my child back, you can't fix this. You can't right. fix me. You know, God is the only one who's going to be able to fix me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I can't fix myself. All I can do is cry out to God right. and just let him be at work in his time and his way in this darkness. And sometimes we feel like he's not at work because mm -hmm. it's so dark and we're just crying out to him and we're just not... Yeah not feeling him. That reminds me of one. Okay. <laughs> that whole thing about crying out to God and and of course God is our comfort. We wouldn't get through this at all right. if it wasn't for him. But there are some people who think that uh if if we had stronger faith yes. or or you know mm -hmm. we would be getting through this easier. Yes. Somehow if we you had know, you're stronger victorious. faith. You're an overcomer. You know, greater is he that is in you. <laughs> you know, yeah. Pumping us up. Yeah, and, and it's the darkness that we experience is not a lack of faith or a mm -hmm. lack of, of relying on God. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we grief. are. It's grief. Yeah. <laughs> it's grief. It's grief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we need to grieve. Mm -hmm. We need to go through the process. Mm -hmm. like you can't go around it. You can mm -hmm. only push it down for so long. Mm -hmm. You have to go well, through it. When I lost Jody, yes, she, she was in the womb, and I had... To have your turn for tears. Only I can't talk <laughs> when I cry. When I lost Jody, mm -hmm. that was the worst experience mm -hmm. that I have had in my life up to that point. I had emergency abdominal surgery and it ended her life but saved mine. Mm -hmm. The guilt from that was awful, mm -hmm. but I went to my mom. Mm -hmm. I said, Mom, how did you survive the loss of a child? Her baby was a week old, which would have been my sister. And she says, you just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and keep going like nothing happened. So I went to my sister, who had lost a set of twins that mm -hmm. were two, two weeks old. And I said, Myrna, how did you ever get through this? This is the most horrible pain ever to lose a child, and she says, you just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and don't ever talk about it or mm. think about it. Just keep going like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow. And that's what I learned way back then. And the, the grief still came out all these oh, years yeah. later. I mean, look at the tears I know, now. I was going to say how many years because ago Because I didn't yeah. even get to grieve at that time. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it just went on like nothing happened. And it was it's like yeah. my whole world had been turned topsy-turvy, mm -hmm. and yet... You were told, yeah, yeah, just pretend like it never happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work that mm -hmm. way to ignore the loss of a child, any, any age. Right. Mm -hmm. From, you know, conception on. You know, miscarriages, I, I have great empathy yeah. for people that from... Yes. You know, miscarriages to stillbirths to, mm -hmm. you know, babies in the womb. I, mm -hmm. yeah. I know right. what a pain that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought of one last one while we were talking because I, I remembered someone actually telling me this. They actually caught up to me in a parking lot after I spoke at a church. 
And they said, at least you know where your daughter is. Mm. There's that at least word. Mm -hmm. <sighs> there it is. You know, so how much comfort does it give us to know our child's with the Lord instead of with us? At first, when you're off. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> The silence speaks Whoa. loudly. <laughs> I mean, we know they're in a better place, but... We think that better place is right next to right us. Right next to us, yes. Yeah. The better place yeah. is with me. I'm the mom, mm -hmm. I'm the dad. Mm -hmm. How can it be better for them not to be here with me? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think for me, after a few years that perspective has changed, it has. you know, and I'm, I, and I can be happy for Becca and I can, it's like, okay, she's safe. She didn't have to go through COVID. She didn't have to, you know, a lot of things. We think about what our children are missing, mm -hmm. the, the good parts of life that they're missing. You know, um, Becca will never know what it's like to be a grandma. She'll mm -hmm. never get to walk, you know, see her daughter get married, you know, those kinds of things. But then she never had to go through COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, I have no idea the horrible, tragic things that she might have had to have gone through had she not, I mean, she's in this perfect, glorious place. Would I rather her be here with me? Oh, yeah, hands down. But <laughs> since that's not an option, I have to pray and ask the Lord to help me change that perspective and be more happy for her than sad for me, mm -hmm. I guess. And that's right. a process. Right. That is a huge process. Mm -hmm. And... And for someone to just tell someone else, well, at least you know where she is. She's in a better place. It's like, don't tell me that. That's like something I have to realize for myself. Mm -hmm. That's something the Holy Spirit Good point. has to give me mm -hmm. my own revelation right. of. And you telling me that makes me bristle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help. Yeah. It, it, I've yeah. always thought it trivializes it yes. when you boil it down to just that one thing. Mm -hmm. And what you are saying is it's a process of realizing that eventually that becomes uh, a great comfort to us. But and in the beginning, to just say she's in a better place, it boils it down to just one little thing. And mm -hmm. there's so much more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like saying, stop grieving. Stop being sad. She's yeah. in a better place. Yeah. It's like, you can't do that. <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can't. I think a uh, scripture that really has given me comfort is Isaiah 57, 1, which you kind of touched on, is that we don't know what they were spared mm -hmm. because they left early. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And I, I truly do believe that with mm -hmm. our son, mm -hmm. of what he was spared, what we were spared to see him go through mm -hmm. all of the horrible things that can happen in this world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you right. know, some of his choices were not very good yeah and that would have accelerated so we find comfort mm -hmm. in Isaiah 57 1 yeah and I think it's a lot easier for those of us who have lost a child to talk about that and to share that with mm -hmm. each other you know have you thought about this perspective mm -hmm. it helped me if instead of coming from someone who's never lost a child <laughs> telling right, us right. this Any is how you, telling us this is us. how we should feel right. yeah. you know this is how you should feel and like you said yeah. throwing scriptures at us mm -hmm. um, you know right. it's just it's like oh it doesn't, help. It doesn't. and scripture mm -hmm. is truth but dave one thing dave likes to say is there are people who like to speak the truth. I won't say it the way he does it, but they like to speak the truth, but they don't know how to speak the truth in love. They love to speak the truth. But they don't. But they, yeah, but they have a hard time speaking the truth in love. And so, yeah, throwing a bunch of scriptures at us, it just mm -hmm. doesn't help. It yeah. doesn't help. The Holy Spirit has to bring that to us at the right time when we're ready to receive that word from him in, into our hearts. What? Something you said earlier about uh, that should be able to just I forget your words, turn the grief off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As if there's a switch yeah. in us to turn grief on and off. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> there <laughs> isn't. I guess that's mm -hmm. a that's a separate thing too, but it, it came up yeah. in my mind as if we can somehow turn grief off. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> It's not possible. I'm still looking for the switch. There. Yeah, it's not possible. I can't if find you it. Find it. Let me know. Anybody out there, let us know. Yeah. And and no matter how many years pass, because it's been a little over ten years for me, and it's different 
the the tr the track of grief is different now than it mm -hmm. was, but it there it's still in me. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's still in me. Oh yeah. Well, I think we've covered a lot of mm -hmm. good stuff here. BJ, I know I can put you on the spot here. Would oh. you please pray for all of us and for the listeners and just, you know, to have that, what, EGR? <laughs> <laughs> Extra grace required. Yes, there we go. EGR. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you just so grateful for the things that you're teaching us through this podcast. For Laura, we lift her up to you for yes. being so open to your leading and, and wanting to help in any way she can. Thank you for all the listeners that have heard the messages today, and mm -hmm. hopefully they can glean some bits of uh, hope and help. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Lord, uh, for providing us this time together. Yes. Please bless it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, ladies, very much for joining me for this conversation. I totally enjoyed it. I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening in on our talk and that it was helpful to you. This episode is a good one, in case you haven't thought about it, to share with those who have not lost a child, especially those who seem to want to be there for you, but they are missing the mark in what is helpful in conversations and what is not. I am very excited to know that I will be seeing several of the Perivers who were able to come to our Weekend of Hope again in February on the Grief Cruise. Now, I know that might sound like an oxymoron, but the upcoming Grief Cruise is a wonderful experience that will strengthen and refresh you spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, maybe even physically, depending on what you do with your free time. The Grief Seminar takes place during the three days at sea, so you don't miss out on any of the ports of call or the evening ship activities and entertainment. Now, this is for anyone with a deep loss, not just for those who have lost a child, but GPS Hope will have several sessions just for perivers, along with chances for us to meet together as a group. This is a seven-night Eastern Caribbean cruise on the beautiful Royal Caribbean ship Symphony of the Seas, and it doesn't happen until the end of February of next year of 2025. So you can put money down and then pay a bit at a time as you are able. You can check it out at gpshope.org slash cruise. And just to let you know, if you click the button on that page for more specific registration information, and then you decide to book your cruise, GPS Hope will get a portion of your seminar registration fee. By the way, I will be turning 62 while on the cruise, and I just think it is a fun way to celebrate a birthday surrounded by Caribbean ocean beauty and with perivers from our GPS Hope family. I really hope you can join us. It can't hurt to check it out, right? gpshope.org slash cruise, or look for the link in the show notes. Let's go ahead with this week's birthday segment. Nina Renee Ray was born on August 5th and is forever two years old. Gabriel Andrew Marino was born on August 5th and is forever 28. Jacob Gray was born on August 6th and is forever 21. Travis M. Blair was born on August 9th and is forever 30. Christopher Hotch was born on August 10th and is forever 31. Jacob Holliday was born on August 10th and is forever 26. As always, we celebrate the day these children came into the world. It will always be a special day and worth celebrating. If you would like to have your child's birthday announced on our birthday segment, I would love to be able to do that. Just go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. The form will come up. Just fill that out, including the pronunciation of how to say your child's first or last name, if sometimes it's said incorrectly, because I want to say it right for you. And then the week of his or her birthday, they will be announced on the birthday segment. I want to say thank you again to BJ and Sarah for joining me in this conversation. 
When we lose a child, we need comfort, not advice. Unfortunately, there are not very many people who understand that. Eventually, the unkind or unthoughtful things people say don't hurt us quite as much. We finally come to grips with the fact that people don't mean to be insensitive and hurtful with their words. They are saying what they think will help us. And in time, when I say time, I mean it can take several years, we discover these things don't have the same painful effect on us anymore, usually. The bottom line is that no one person, no person can really give us the depth of the comfort we need. Our pain is too deep and it's too intense. God is really, truly the greatest source of our comfort if we allow him to be through the Holy Spirit. Even though we would much rather have our children here with us, we can be comforted to know that they are safe with him and that he made it possible that we will be with them again someday never to be separated again. So as you and I both wait for that day, let's remember to hold on. Pain eases. There is hope.